Coming up on th <laughs> coming up on 3D Hangouts, episode 172, dials, buttons, and Joy-Cons. So we're going to be taking a look at a CircuitPython-powered rotary encoder. We're going to do a Shop Talk segment. And some Fusion 360 techniques. All, All that and more, and more on 3D well, Hangouts. You guessed it. Roll the intro. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. I am Noel Ruiz, a designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week is Mr. Pedro. What's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro Rose, creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is where we combine 3D printing and DOI electronics to make inspirational projects. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We are live on YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, uh, Twitch, all those places. Thank you so much for joining us. You can, of course, tune in to us live every Wednesday at 11 a.m. That's when we do the show. Okay. Let's start off with my favorite part, paying some bills with a coupon code ROTARY. That's right. Gets you a 10% off when you enter in coupon code ROTARY. In the Airfreak shop, you will get, uh, this will work on everything except gift certificates and subscriptions. That's right. We also have some freebies, adafruit.com slash free. So check that out. We have updated the page and all the little perks and stuff you get for different tiers. It's on the website, adafruit.com slash free. Check it out. We also have same day delivery for fine folks in the Manhattan area in New York City. Check that out on the website if you are interested in that option. We have some newsletters, of course. adafruitdaily.com is where you will want to opt into those. Thanks so much for subscribing to those. We also have a product-specific newsletter. This one is adafruit.com slash newsletter. Got to opt in for that one, too. You get that one once a week. Yeah. Hanging out in the Discord chat room. This is where you can get project help, share your projects, or just generally hang out. Um, it's open 24-7, so you can check that out. The link to that is up there above the YouTube chat. It is discord.gg slash adafruit. That's the invite uh, link. Yeah, I think we went through that pretty well. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's really cool, useful 3D printed project. Yeah, this one was this one was a lot of fun to put together. It's a Circuit Python powered media dial. What's a media dial? <laughs> so a long time ago, they used to have these really cool. Um, it's like a mouse. It scrolls like a mouse, clicks like a mouse. Yeah, and this one was made by Griffin Technologies. Uh, I don't know. A couple years ago, ago yeah. yeah. They so, recently refurbished it to make it Bluetooth, but the, the thing about it is it's a assignable USB controller. So you can make it do pretty much whatever you want. A lot of people use it to edit video, uh, mm -hmm. just play movies, volume, um, that sort of stuff. But this particular model isn't really supported anymore because it's kind of old. Um, so it's cool that we kind of are able to make them even better now with some pretty inexpensive parts. I mean, the, all the parts to build this is about 25-ish dollars. Mm -hmm. It's pretty awesome. And what's so cool is you it. can set this up to control any key command that you can think of. So right now I just have it set up for brightness and volume. And when you click in, it's set up for an escape key because on the new MacBooks, the escape key is a display that is not yeah, tactile. It's, it's not tactile. And it occasionally likes to freeze on you. So when that happens, I can just use this to escape out of whatever program or adjust it to control like YouTube playback or any other thing you can think of that the, the smash can do. emergency button. It's like uh, it's like it reminds me of Colin's uh, big big key button. Yeah. So last week I showed you what I thought this week's project was gonna look like. This itty bitty little uh, media encoder. This thing's so cute. Look how small it is. Yeah. So it, inside is a Trinket M0 running Circuit Python and just a rotary encoder on top. And last minute, right. Before we were about to shoot, Lamar was sent over some code. To make for... it work with a NeoPixel ring. Mm -hmm. So the deal here is that the NeoPixel ring lights up a, uh, a NeoPixel, you know, kind of follows the direction of the, of, of the rotary encoder, how you're turning it. 
So, you know, that can be inside. useful for just knowing where you are in a position because the rotary encoder isn't a potentiometer. Yeah. It just kind of f rotates full 360. Yeah, so on the inside is a simple new 16 NeoPixel ring on there. And it just follows the direction of where you're spinning. Super useful, very granular for um, like volume and brightness or scrolling through a document. Mm -hmm. uh, dual printed case with the translucent material right in the center of that. You could, of course, uh, snap fit this or just print it completely transparent and like color in the rest of that. On the inside, if I plug this. Real quick question from Optimus Riv. Can it be used for art shortcuts? Yes, we'll take a look at the code and, and some key codes uh, and how you can kind of group together mm -hmm. multiple modifiers to create custom key commands. Yes, the library does allow for that. And then on the inside, you can see it's just a uh, trinket M0. And then doing the uh, handy uh, flex PCB to extend the uh, multiple ground connections that are required for this. Mm -hmm. uh, all sna snap fit together design, so no hardware required for that. Really happy with the design on that. And nice little fit together parts on that, like that. I like the knurling on the side. It kind of helps you give a little bit of grip to it, but mm -hmm. it just kind of shows that you can kind of customize the knob to be whatever you want. It doesn't have to be a circle. It could be a triangle, I guess, yeah, if you wanted to. <laughs> completely scalable. We'll take a look at the Fusion 360 files for that. So you can update any of the diameter for that. If you want to make, say, a bigger button for like assistive tech, oh, yes, or you cool. can uh, shrink it down to the tiniest. Uh, package so you yeah. can actually make a modular keyboard. Yeah, yeah. If you don't need the NeoPixel ring, you can just kind of go with this mm -hmm. route. Just one rotary knob. Definitely and recommend going with the fancy yeah, route. It's, it's that's nice. so cool. Alex uh, Corvus in the chat room is, has a pretty neat idea of making a DIY Nest thermostat because it does kind of remind me of that. It looks pretty like neat. that, huh? Yeah, yeah. May have a little uh, OLED display in the center. <laughs> that would be cool. Lots of different ways you can take this design and improve upon. Let's go ahead and take a look at the learning guide for this. Thank you for the link, Kirby. He just posted a link to it. So yeah, if you go to the learning system, check it out. It's right up on the home page. Um, you got the video up there, which explains it, overview. Mm -hmm. This is really all the parts you need. It's not yeah. battery powered because you kind of need a, uh, it's a USB controller. Mm -hmm. So you kind of need your USB cable and that'll provide all the power you need to run the circuit. Yeah, the one, optional, the one optional thing you can use for extending the ground connections on the Trinket M0, the hero of this project you is... Love this thing. Yeah, we talked yeah. about this uh, quite a bit, uh, especially yeah, for these smaller uh, microcontrollers that, mm -hmm. that you want to break out more connections, especially ground connections for you know, different peripherals. Yeah, so we got these really cool flexible PCBs in the shop. It's the Proto, uh, Promo Flex PCB. It's a half-sized. And it is printed on this really cool flexible material. You can see that the traces are actually connected on the ground rail. Right right closer. Here. You can get a little bit closer. There you go. Yeah, so you got some thicker uh, ground and power rails there. You can cut them with some standard scissors um, or cut them with an X Acto knife. Oh, that's just to show. It's just a point, yeah. yeah. So the ones you want to use are the thicker power and ground rails right here, as opposed to these. Very, very thin PCB, yet mm -hmm. it's still uh, strong enough to kind of hold and jostle around a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if you do need something a little bit more rigid, we also have the Perma Proto boards that are using the FR4 yeah. style. Yeah, they're about seven bucks, but I've definitely, be, definitely been getting <laughs> like seven dollars worth cut up and it's like this with all the different projects. Shape. Yeah. So yeah. lots of uses for that if you want to extend. Um, definitely beats having to make a Y cable. Oh easier. yeah, kind of splicing cables to, to mm -hmm. kind of go out in two different ways. Yeah, it's a nice little solution there. Yeah. And of course the rotor encoder and the Trinket M0 brings the project to about 20, 24 bucks, something like that. Yeah. Depending nice. on what... Uh, you can pick these up here. Depending on what uh, <laughs> Look how thin components you already have. It's very thin. You can use it for wearable stuff too as well. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, since it is flexible. All right, cool. So check that out if you want that. Let's go back to the guide and kind of run through it. Some prerequisite guides, of course. Uh, definitely want to recommend checking out the CircuitPython uh, welcome guide, as it has all the information you need uh, to get started with CircuitPython. But we'll walk you through it in the, uh, in the code section of this guide. Uh, just all the products here, most of them. If you need some filament or a 3D printer, we have that as well. We got a pretty nice deal with those printers, as uh, if you are in the US continental, um, you get free shipping on those printers. Let's forget to say that. 
Free shipping not and 10% <laughs> off. Yeah. Let's take a look at the circuit diagram. Pretty straightforward. You got the rotary encoder. It has a you know, handful of connections. Um, <laughs> you would definitely want to reference this while you're wiring it because, uh, you know, mixing up the, it's always something that happens, mixing up the Definitely want to have different right. color-coded wires for each connection just so you yeah. can um, quickly reference what those are supposed to be connected to. Mm -hmm. uh, three of the ones that I made, I did have to switch the three-legged side of the potentiometer because it was rotating the opposite way, so it was inverse when I was rotating the yeah. dial. Yeah, maybe you want that. Maybe you want it inverted. Yeah, that's All a right. good way to do it. And yeah. there's another note here about using uh, the uh, the flex PCB for uh, extending the ground connections. That's really where we need more of those pins because sharing three wires and, and one little pin is kind of hard. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and all the uh, connections are broken out verbally too. Yep, you got all the uh, wire measurements for each component. Oh, yeah, of course, that's actually kind of so useful. You easily get those uh, uh, nice and compact so you're not using so much wire or too little wire. Okay. Moving on to the code. Code, my favorite part here. So, we'll walk you through uh, setting up the Trinket M0. Now, if you just got yourself a Trinket M0 this month, or maybe last month, it, it, it does ship with CircuitPython version 2.2. Um, but if you have an older Trinket, um, it probably ships uh, without, without, yeah, with the older CircuitPython, maybe CircuitPython 1.0. So this just kind of reassures you that, hey, go ahead and, and, and uh, kind of flash your Trinket. Very, very easy to do. Um, it's just a download link for a UF2 file, and you double tap the, the reset button on your Trinket. It'll turn itself into a, a USB drive called Trinket Boot. And that's where you can drop that UF2 file and it'll automatically flash itself. Pretty straightforward and easy. So once you have your Trinket with the latest version of CircuitPython, you'll probably want to update your CircuitPython library bundle. This bundle includes all of the libraries that are for CircuitPython, for different peripherals, different sensors. You only need two of them here. You don't have to drag the whole library folder over to your Trinket. You just need the ones you need. Mainly because the trinket has a little bit of yeah, it has uh, it has some uh, not that much RAM. Okay, so what you need is the NeoPixel library. That's just one file, and the Adafruit HID library, which has several uh, kind of things in it. It, it, has, it supports the the keyboards and some mouse stuff. So you want to get those. Once you have those, it's as simple as just dropping those um, those library files into a, a lib folder inside your CircuitPy. Trinket USB drive, and then you can upload the code, which is down here. Pretty straightforward code. Uh, we walked through a little bit of how to change um, how to change the key codes. The key codes are the little, pretty much the values that will will tell uh, what key you want to you want to execute, right? So you have three options here. You have turning it to the left, turning it to the right and then pressing it down. So you have up to three different key commands you can do. Uh, so all of them are kind of listed in this little cheat sheet here that, that shows you uh, what value is what. So you have basic characters, um, and then you kind of go into caps lock, forward slash, function keys, um, alts, commands, windows key. All of those are listed here. Again, we don't have uh, some of the media stuff because that's still being worked still on. Still coming, yeah. Yeah, but you have pretty much a full range of, of all the keys that are, are kind of associated with um, executing macros. Mm -hmm. So say you want to take a screenshot, uh, you, you have that as well. There's like a print screen. For Mac, it's like Command, Shift, 3. And that's going to be really useful because uh, you don't want to you know, use the whole half of your keyboard to execute a command when you can just command, yeah. click one button. So but going back to the code, the way it's set up is, if you look down here, this, you can read the comments and see uh, which, uh, which key is going to be pressed to which uh, direction. Um, and I believe it's right here. So if the rotary encoder goes up, that means if you're kind of making it right. go to the right. If it goes down, it's going to the left. And if you just press it in, it's executing these. So if you look in between the parentheses of keyboard.press, you can see we actually have two things happening. We have the control key and the up arrow. So you can add as many as you want and then just separate them with commas. So it's pretty easy. Uh, and then the second one is the control key and the down arrow. And then the actual press button, we have it set up for uh, number 44. And you're thinking, well, what's number 44, right? That's not key press. It's mm -hmm. not control key. What is it? 
Well, that's why we have this guy over here because you can also do it this way where you can uh, just throw in a number and it'll, it'll uh, correspond to that, uh, that key. In this example, it's 77 and it's the N key. So what was 44? I think it's the space key, right? 44, just search for that. Yeah, it's the space bar. So kind of like press and, press and play a different media. Uh, so you can change it up there, and please do. Uh, and again, this is just executing one key, and the other two are executing two keys. And you can do, a, I, th I think there's a limit, but I'm not sure I haven't hit it yet, because I'm only doing two, two commands. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the most part. While well, you're still there, got yes. a question. Which coding language? It's in the description of this yeah, project. It is it's uh, Python. It's Circuit, Circuit Python. Python. It's, yes. it's Python shrunk down for embedded, mm -hmm. for embedded systems. So. And then big up to, I believe, uh, Dan? Yeah, Dan Hubbard. Dan wrote this whole thing, so and big up Scott to that. as well. They Dan are the, Scott, uh, yeah. the contributors behind the, the HID library. And that's kind of how Dan got his footing into Adafruit, actually, yeah, yeah. by starting this library. Yeah, Liz was saying that, she's, that she usually has to hunt those down. Uh, here we provide them all for you. Okay. Yeah, it's listed and linked, and uh, it's a part of the read the docs. So circuitpython.readthedocs.io, a lot of nice documentation there. Sweet, all right. Oh, also, one last thing I'll throw. It's pretty simple to change the NeoPixel color. It's up here, actually. It's defined at the top as dot color, and it's kind of set up as a he web hex color. So that's kind of neat, a little bit different. Uh, and then you can change the dot press color, your second favorite color. Oh, I didn't know that. If you press it, it'll change a different color. Mm -hmm. Did you know yeah, that? Yeah, I was trying to say, yeah. I didn't know that. I was trying to tell you that. <laughs> it's uh, fine, though. <laughs> okay. Cool. So there's lots of modifications you can add to this. Of course, one I r would really like to see is if you, when you press down, it switches between different modes. Mm. So you go between add some volume more, and Yeah, that would be really great. And then you can use the brightness. colors to let you know what mode you're in. That, that would be really point, cool. Yeah. A lot of great things to kind of expand upon on this. Mm -hmm. And a thing that we have to mention every single time we talk about CircuitPython is that this loads as a USB drive. Uh, you can't look yeah. at my desktop here, but it loads just like a regular USB drive, you can open it up, <laughs> this look is, at the code, change it. If I can show ever, you. Okay. I have here a, uh, this guy over here. Pretty much oh, the I same can't thing. Show you. Uh, can I show you under wires the Wires too small. Wires this too. is what we're using for the scene switching. Hit the actual scene, the, this one down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that actually changes the scene. So uh, pretty much, pretty close to the same Same code. library, same, same library. circuit Python. It's the M0 Express, but it's mm -hmm. using uh, pretty similar code. So it's awesome. Uh, and yeah, it just loads up as uh, a USB drive. I can modify the code without having to download an IDE. Although we do recommend uh, using the Moo editor, yeah. but that's for another, uh, that's for another show. <laughs> okay. Moving on past the code, once you've got all your libraries installed, mm -hmm. you move on to 3D printing. Yes. You talk about very this, I gotta my simple, <laughs> Very simple design. It's all completely editable Fusion 360 file that you can adjust the diameter if you want to fit something bigger or uh, actually make it portable. You can look at the cross section for all these here. And it's just, uh, you just require uh, 2.5 mil uh, screws to attach and mount the Trinket M0 on that. Just a couple of settings for the slice uh, set up for this. It's just uh, your run of the mill settings for that 210 for the temperature, 65 for the heat. The only difference that I had to change here on the Ultimaker for doing the dual extrusion, for whatever reason, they have their extrusion width set to 0.35, which made the tolerances for this a little off. So I just updated it to 0.38, as are the other Ultimakers in the background there. And that made all of the tolerances fit uh, really perfect. So oh, Pedro, what about the, I don't have a dual extruder. How do I print this? I include the files for that as well. You could also actually snap fit the translucent center onto the main uh, oh, cover of it. Oh, you could fuse them together with like, yeah. some glue or something maybe? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Or you, or just if you just want to completely just print, print it, it white or translucent. some translucent material. Exactly, yeah. That'll work. Okay, cool. And if you scroll down, what else do I have on there? No support material required. For any um, of the parts, right? Yeah, okay. even the middle part, if you scroll back up and take a look at the cross section, you can see that it has this ginormous fillet on the top there. So you're not going to need to actually add any support materials for that. The overhangs for the USB port opening should print fairly well with just your standard active cooling fan. Sweet. And mm -hmm. probably one note is uh, you'll want to orient the parts 
Uh, they oh, are pre-oriented. The only ones that aren't are the dual extrusion versions, just right. so you can keep the um, the 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 origin alignment. Yeah. Uh, so when you combine those together. And yeah. So when you're designing them. for dual extrusion, you want to export your model separately as is. Don't move them around after the fact. Don't orient them because when you bring them into Ultimaker, yeah, it's going to be all over the place. But when you uh, select them as a group and then right-click merge it'll uh, snap them all to their original origins uh, nicely, and then mm -hmm. you can orient. And then you have to orient it flat on the bed. Don't print it like that. That's not, <laughs> that's not the, yes. print it like this, where it's flat down. But you just have to kind of do that little extra step here when you're dealing with uh, dual extrusion parts. Mm -hmm. Cool. You can, of course, like we said, modify the Fusion 360 files or just export those actually through the web uh, app of uh, Fusion 360 yeah. to step files for Rhino. Check them out too in the little other. web browser. Just kind of see them. Um, just click on that and then there's a download link up here where you can download it in different formats. Mm -hmm. Step, SAT, BX, SketchUp. SketchUp and OBJ. I think. Uh, oh, I saved it with things turned off. <laughs> oh, okay. They, they're all there though. All right. Jumping on to the assembly. Very straightforward on that. Just want to prepare all your wires. They all have uh, different lengths for the ring and the knob or the rotary encoder. You know, Look at these wires. They're, they're like, you know how hard it is to set them up like that? They all yeah, flop they around and it's hard to. Yeah, yeah. Definitely want to use third helping hands to help uh, hold things while you're tinning and soldering those. Uh, super simple um, for the the flex PCB ground extension. So you want to add pre-tin the ground pin for that. Use a tweezer to hover over knee, over above and then just apply heat to solder that on. Make yeah. sure that it is definitely, nice and straight so it's not making string, uh, Definitely use tweezers because you know you burn your fingers because it gets pretty hot. Right? It's very small, yeah. So if you scroll down over to the NeoPixel ring uh, oh, wanna, I wanted to talk about how you how you kind of have this little rig here. <laughs> uh, that's, that's just for filming. You don't have to do that. Oh, but I'm just I just have a uh, tweezer and a helping hand holding those together. That's kind of so neat because you get, you can uh, yeah you can lay them all <coughs> spread out instead of having them all bundled up and then having to kind of do this little thing. Kind of neat. Or know, doing one by one, which is so annoying yeah. to have to set up for a shot. Mm, okay. So moving on, you want to solder to the NeoPixel ring from the bottom. So first tin those, and then you can apply heat to push each uh, 30 gauge silicone coated wire is what we recommend using for this. So you can easily bundle those up and it doesn't matter if they get bent. Okay. And those should be about 90 millimeters long, I believe. And then you could thread those through the top of the middle enclosure. And there are more holes in there than you will need for the wires. And that's just to give you a little bit of a helping hand to uh, remove the ne NeoPixel ring if you ever need to do maintenance on it. Okay. Because it does, once you mount that in there, it does get fairly uh, snapped uh, pretty well into place uh, since it does have that groove on the inside of that middle enclosure. So you use something like a tweezer to poke it back out if you ever need to do any maintenance on it. Okay. Push that through, it snaps into place, and then you can move on to setting up your rotary encoder. Uh, definitely reference the circuit diagram for the way that the pins are all laid out. You want to bend those out just a little bit so it doesn't make any contact with the trinket once it's mounted inside of the enclosure. Okay. And you can reference the uh, circuit diagram for that. And then to panel mount the um, the rotary encoder just pushes through. Uh, obviously, remove the washer and the hex nut before doing that, and then you can place those back in. You want to orient it so the legs are uh, aligned with the USB opening on the enclosure, just so that they are uh, aligned right over where the pins will connect to the trinket once it's mounted. Scroll down. Looks like I skipped a couple of steps there. I already talked about uh, the washer and the hex nut. Replace that. Moving on to actually soldering all that to the trinket, want to use, uh, again, just line those up so you can easily solder all of the connections together. And yeah, just be patient in soldering all these tiny little co uh, connections. And if you, are, if you did have to use the smaller trace PCB rail on that, definitely recommend dragging some solder across that just in case it does bend. 
yeah. you do manage to break one of the traces, which happened to me. Okay. Uh, but if you can avoid it, use the thicker. Uh, right. Pow ah, it's just a good idea to tin rail. it, pre-tin it. You know. Yeah. So it's you can just stronger. drag some solder across to uh, make the 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 thinner traces on the flex PCB a little bit more stronger. Mm -hmm. And it's stiff too. Yeah. After that, uh, preparing the lid that the trinket will mount to, I definitely recommend pre-tapping these first. So uh, just take the uh, M2.5 5 meter, meter long screws and create the threads by uh, screwing those into place first to create the threads and then mounting your trinket on top will make that a lot more easier. Okay. Uh, looks like the server for learn uh, need to kick it since it's not yeah. <laughs> updating the bundling of the uh, wires there. Yeah. Okay. Wasn't even loading the, mm -mm. the original file? The original file? Yeah. yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much just using Kapton or shrink tube to... Uh, no, what's great about using Kapton is like, well, I, I'm not going to unsolder everything and thread the shrink yeah, tubing yeah. through. So just so definitely want through. You definitely want to bundle nice. it up so it's not like all over the place when you are fitting the lid onto yeah. the uh, middle enclosure there. Uh, so to mount this, uh, like I said, you don't have to use any snap fit nubs for this. So you can uh, insert this at an angle. It should have a pretty tight tolerance. Start with the back, uh, the opposite side of the USB port opening. Uh, plate, uh, align that, snap it into place. And then before you actually snap the front side of it, where the USB opening for that is, you can align that and make sure that the the USB uh, connection on the trinket and the opening on the um, enclosure are all lined up. So you can just rotate that until they lined up and then just snap it into place. Pretty self-explanatory for the casing on the actual knob. Just line it up with the D slot and then just push until it reaches the bottom of the enclosure. That's pretty much it. The opening should fit the largest USB cable that we have in the shop. That shouldn't be a problem. And then just hook it up, run your code, see if it works. You can obviously update it in real time by going into your desktop, editing the MPY file, and referencing what key combinations uh, you think would work out. Yeah, what's cool about uh, CircuitPython is you can just change it pretty quick mm -hmm. as it's plugged in and as it's running. So it's pretty nice, you yeah. can just quickly, it's all about quick iteration with CircuitPython. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to upload your code. Just yeah. modify it and hit the save button. Pretty nice. Really useful project. Um, yeah, definitely so, a, uh, a dash to the finish line with that one because we were about to, you know, film mm. everything with just this little one, but we had to, you know, put the brakes, stop, remodel, and reshoot everything because this one is just so cool. <laughs> yeah, I love the way that the indication on this feature, yeah. shows the uh, the where you are. In mm -hmm. terms of uh, the, the dial, a lot of the dials, even the newest version of the PowerMate, I, I don't think they still have an indication for that, right? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty useful, super cool, modifiable for many different applications. If you make one, do any modifications to this, definitely post it as a remix. I'd love to check it out. We'll blog about it. If you guys have any questions, yeah, post don't it up forget in the chat. If you Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, definitely. Um, good comment from uh, Donald Bell. Hey, Donald. Oh, hey, hey. It's, uh, yes, the Flix it's one of those little board. tools that uh, you're, you're, you don't know about until uh, so you run out of connections. You kind of run out of connections. Yeah. Yeah. No. Super, super handy to have yeah, these little nice. guys around. Cool. OK, so if you, you know, want to pick up a rotary encoder or maybe a trinket, trinket or maybe the Flex PCBs, don't pay full price. Get ten percent off with coupon code Rotary. Mm -hmm. I think that went well. So people saying <laughs> are asking about new monitors. Do we have any new monitors? I think Lamar actually previewed some new monitors that yeah. she's working on. HD you're gonna have ones? to yeah, you're gonna have to watch Ask an Engineer for that one. Cool. Liz is uh, really liking Moo and the REPL. It makes yes. it really easy to kind of debug and see what's going on in the, ser uh, the serial terminal. Definitely recommended. Very nice. Is the original model available? Which one? The triangular one or the 
The yeah. non-NeoPixel one? Yeah, the rectangular one. That hasn't really been shared, but if you want it, we could throw it up there on Thingiverse right, and yeah, share it. Yeah, I didn't it. share it yet. It's a completely separate design, <laughs> so. Um, yeah, super handy. It's, it's really making. the smallest you can get it, um, so which, which might be useful uh, in certain mm -hmm. applications. I think Yanni had the good idea of making a modular keyboard. Oh, that these. snaps. Yeah, <laughs> like to snap it together. Like yeah. Very nice idea for that. Cool. Thank All right, you. if you guys have any other questions about it, we'll run through them through uh, as we do the show. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it for the project. Be sure to check it out. It's on the Adafruit Learning System. Um, you can check it out, learn.adafruit.com. A lot of great tutorials and things. We're actually going to look at some, some other ones in, uh, during the Shop Talk segment. Now let's go ahead and jump over to this week's What, what are you, you prototyping? prototyping? Yeah, so what I'm prototyping is actually over there, and it's uh, it's all over, laid out on the desk all night. So what I'm going to do is just show you guys some of the CAD stuff. So I'm working on this thing called a, <laughs> it's called a Big Mac. And it's a speech generating kind of button that assistive tech folks uh, use for doing all sorts of different things. So, so sometimes you just need a big button to play back an audio clip. And that's sort of what this is going to do. It's pretty, pretty simple functionality-wise, um, but it's, it can be expandable to do just about anything. So it's, it's kind of like the, the rotary dial, except it just does one thing and it plays audio. So we're going to use CircuitPython, of course, and the Circuit Playground to do this. And it's, it's really, really pricey because a lot of AT stuff is, unfortunately. So we're going to try to make a DIY one that's way cheaper and more flexible and expandable. So what I'm going to do is just show you a little bit of the CAD stuff. Let me switch over here, go into tunnel view. Uh, so this is what I have so far. It's using our 100 millimeter massive arcade button. And inside, we're going to embed the circuit Python, we're going to embed the circuit playground board so you can see it and it'll light up when you push it, right? Uh, the button itself is assembled, it's, it's got a, a couple different pieces to it. It's got this dome piece, which is, which is really nice and clear, made of plastic. And then there's this, I'm trying to hide it here, I guess I can't. And then there's a, a, a holder piece, and then there's a, there's a, a housing for, for that piece, and then another housing for that piece. There's a lot of pieces going on for this button, so. Uh, I figured I'd model it, and if anybody uh, wants to use that in their CAD designs, they can totally do so. I'll, I'll share it as a free uh, download. We got an amplifier here on the side that's going to be mounted on the top. That's going to just kind of give more oomph to the little speaker. Speaking of the speaker, we're using the little, uh, I think it's a 3 ohm speaker. It's like a self-enclosed uh, speaker. And then we're using one of the new pot switches that has a switch. It's a pot switch. So it has an on and off button. Yeah, so you can end. turn it up and turn it down so it'll adjust the volume. And then down here, because the circuit playground is going to be embedded and kind of not accessible with the dome, I mean, you'll be able to remove the dome, but if you don't want to do that, uh, we have our micro USB breakout board. So that's going to be mounted to the side. And that's, that's a really good, I think it's a really good way to break out the USB without having to kind of drill a hole inside of, of here. Because imagine doing that, drilling a hole through all this plastic would kind of be difficult. So why not break it out? We have a, a little USB breakout board, which is going to be mounted on the side there. A lot of room in the box. Excuse me. It is missing this, uh, the micro switch, which is pretty much taking up all that space there. So that's why it's kind of big. Could probably make it a little bit smaller, but it's nice to have all this room in here. Um, and then there's going to be an audio jack here, which I haven't modeled yet, but uh, maybe I'll do that. So that's pretty much what I have so far. Oh, and a, a battery pack. Here's like a AAA battery pack. Um, so you can fit a bigger battery pack as well if you'd want. Um, but that's pretty much what I have so far. Uh, Lamar just finished the code yesterday, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I'm just running through uh, wiring it up and figuring out the best way to kind of route everything. Cause kind of have to drill some holes. I may want to redesign this uh, white piece, but that white piece is pretty much the actuator. And as you can see, there's an actual, <laughs> there's a spring, that, a compression spring that pushes this entire housing up, mm -hmm. right? And the, so I can actually show you guys the button. I have one in here. 
There's a lot of engineering in this little button, dude. Well, it's a big button, but let's take a look now. So this is the big button, right? And this is the micro switch, right? It's got uh, an LED built into it. And you can see when I push it, this little, uh, this little flat thing here is actuating the, the micro switch. And there's, there's the, the little micro switch right there. And this whole thing comes off, right? There's the LED. Right? I can't really wire, I can't really pass the wires through here because once you have this switch installed, well, I no longer have access to that hole. So I had to redesign uh, this housing here, which comes off this housing, right? So there's a lot of pieces to this and working around this thing is a little bit difficult. Uh, and as you can see, there's the spring inside there, compression spring. And um, this comes out with the splunger tool. I don't know how deep we want to go, but why not? I had to learn how to disassemble this thing without breaking it, which was kind of a feat on its own. Uh, there's a compression, compression spring. It's pretty nice. It looks a little bit different than the other one. And then there's these pieces here. And I think this is H, uh, HDPE plastic because it kind of feels like a milk jug. And then this pops out, and then that's where uh, I'm going to mount the circuit playground board, and this is just a cover that comes off, but hey, if you don't know how to, uh, if you've never disassembled this button, it's, it's definitely doable to where you, c you won't break it. I was really afraid to break it. I was mm -hmm. like, no, I don't want to break it. And, and then there's the saying that she didn't realize there were so much going on in these buttons. <laughs> it's a lot. It's <laughs> so, so much. much. <laughs> I have to just set this to the side here because I can put it back together. <laughs> so if you're looking for, you know, a button, that's big, and easy to press. Does audio playback. That can do audio playback. This will be a pretty interesting project, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Kirby and will be John next week's project. A are asking, why not rechargeable? I think there are some. Which rechargeable, like the whole circuit? Yeah, yeah, why not rechargeable? Are, are there some so limits for AT switches? I think that's the whole main thing about it. Right? So um, the Circuit Playground Express really wasn't designed to be rechargeable. It doesn't have a built-in charging circuit. Um, so you could um, put a, one of our micro lipo chargers and wire it to it. Just a little bit more to do. Um, I think that the, what do you call it, like the, the main use for it is it's, we kind of want it to be plugged in to your, to your computer or whatever mm -hmm. uh, because it is using the Adafruit HID library. So that means you can also do fun things like make it click. So Lamar wrote, wrote, it, uh, wrote the code in a way where when you press the button, it's also going to mouse click. It's sort of an optional thing, but um, you, in order to do that, you kind of need to be powered through USB yeah. or at least at, connected to USB. Yeah, and then at that point, uh, the cost savings for... Uh, oh, for no battery and, yeah, for and no, no battery. charging circuit and just the more wires and things like that. Mm -hmm. It just adds a little bit more complexity to it. I mean, it's already kind of complex as it is. If you look at the circuit over there, it's... I'm like, uh, there's wires everywhere. So trying to keep it nice and tidy. And yeah, it's definitely one of those projects where you do have to do some modifications to the actual yeah, closure of it. Yeah, because there's no to holes 3D printing here. Stuff, so. yeah. uh, and I think that was the intention to have it not be ba battery powered. Have yeah, it be exactly. plugged into through USB. Go. You easily okay. could do that also with the, the wireless Qi charger too. So it's inductive charging if you wanted to go that route, if you right. needed it for that use. Okay. And that's what I've been working on. So that'll be next week's project. And if anybody has any questions or suggestions for it, let us know. We're always open for that. <laughs> John K, I'm a wireless guy. The less the better. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, you actually uh, wired it up to be wireless too, but um, right, the, it should be portable. At least portable, yeah. So main intention is it, it to can have be it. both. Yeah. yeah. Um, I and think we'll show you where in the code you can change. Yeah, it there's a lot of room in the box, so that's why it's nice to have just double A batteries. They're less dangerous and mm -hmm. they're more easy to come by, right? So you can change out the batteries. <laughs> Optimus RIV is saying that you could use this as a way to test uh, game sounds to see how they uh, how they sound. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, you can um, make it trigger all sorts of different things. Yeah, um, John Park is actually using it. Uh, as a buzzer kind of thing for Ninja Timer, right? Ninja, mm -hmm. Ninja Warrior, yeah. yeah. So a lot of cool, interesting projects you can do with these pig buttons. Right, okay. Cool. Let's go ahead and move on to this week's Shop Talk. All this right. week's 3D printing time lapse 
Oh, these really cool Joy-Cons. Yeah, so this was fun. So uh, this was voted on you guys in the community section of YouTube. We ran mm -hmm. a poll to see what uh, object we should print first. And uh, this one won over, by like a lot. Yeah, <laughs> overwhelmingly. Yeah, a lot of for. people got themselves a, a, a Nintendo Switch mm -hmm. over the holidays. And this is a really fun... Uh, some of the games are two players, so this is a really good way to add a nice controller to the Joy-Con without having to have that awkward uh, rectangle all you know cramping on your hand. So if you go over to the overhead, it's a nice design by, I forget his name, M, what was the name, designer of this? Uh, you get the links for all this in the show notes. Yeah. Manabun. Manabun. Manabun has this really great design for this. Yeah. Nice little assembly. If you can go over to looks the clean. overhead. Really nice. Printed with support materials. I printed it in that orientation because I saw that's how he printed it. And I also wanted to test out the support uh, removal in the all new Cura. Uh, unfortunately, this was before the 3.2 beta uh, was stable. So I really wanted to test the tree support structures that they have. But the zigzag uh, support pattern worked out really well. There wasn't any like filing of you know removing this, even though it looks pretty coarse. It's nice and soft just because of like the, the wood filament that it we gives used you on a that. Bit more grip to it, mm -hmm. um, and it, it it feels. I don't know. I like the feeling more than just regular PLA. It's a little yeah, fibrous. Yeah. It's kind of neat. Nice and fibrous. This pretty. is a thirty percent <laughs> infill on this, and even with all that, it still feels nice and light, while it's still maintaining its strength. So. Very good material for that. Just wanted it to match with the uh, sort of the pastel palette of what these uh, controllers are. And the tolerances uh, turned out really great on these. It's they, just a so 0.38 uh, uh, line extrusion width for this. And it yeah. goes on there really good. Looks excellent. You can click those, yeah. Why don't we use Simplify 3D? Because we use these on the Ultimaker and Ultimaker provides profiles for these that are continually tested, um, especially on the Ultimaker 3. I don't want to sit there and spend all this time building my own profile because those don't come with it. And that's why we're using Cura for that. Uh, they Cura's free. Cura's free. You can use, I, I still use Simplify for the Type A's and the printer bots. So we use all of the slicers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, another What's thing fun about note, Cura is that we really didn't have to mess with the settings. We didn't have to change. They the do density that. layers. That's we what didn't you're paying for. Change. Yeah. That's what you're paying for. Yeah, that's but it's free. They do all that. Cure is free. The printer. <laughs> the printer. Yeah. Okay. The Ultimaker. So very fun design for uh, adding a nice little game pad to your Joy Cons. Yeah. Shout out to Manabun mm -hmm. uh, for sharing that. And yeah, we'll post the make on there because we're running a little low. But yeah, he printed it that way. Uh, you know, because. When you look at the details and stuff for uh, slotting into the little features on the side of the, mm -hmm. on the, what are they call the Joy-Con, <laughs> uh, they kind of are bestly oriented with that way. So when you're orienting your part of designing, you got to think about, well, what's the feature that really needs to be printed, uh, the benefits uh, printing the feature in, in that particular orientation. And this was kind of the best way to print it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any other way in the, the, the important part of the design really is those little features here that kind of slide into the Joy-Con. And uh, I, I was just peeking at his page. I, I suppose he's uh, from Japan. He's like a Jap Japanese maker. He's got some pretty cool stuff. I'm looking at his blog here. There's a lot of laser cut uh, designs and stuff. So pretty cool. He's working on a lot of cool stuff. So again, shout out to Manabun. Think of Caesar, Manabun. OK. Next up, um, we're still doing Shop Talk. And I'm going to pull up my notes. So I'm going to do this stuff in order. A quick. Cool. Uh, you got something? No, next thing. All right, cool. So we got a magazine. This one is, is it last month's magazine? I think so. I don't know. We went to Barnes & Noble after lunch over the weekend. And we were like, hey, you know what? Let's pick up that. Maybe, maybe Barnes & Noble has that new magazine, the Hexspace one. So we did. We picked it up. And we were really happy because this one is a little bit special because some of you might know is in there. It's Sophie Wong with her snowboarding NeoPixel goggles. It's awesome. So there's Sophie Wong. Huge two-page spread here on this magazine. Big fans of this magazine now. 
And she kind of walks through the builds, what you need, nice lovely photos, great write-up. A couple pages here, talks about uh, sewing, soldering, sewing, soldering, and coding. It's very fun. And there's a lot of great other articles too as well, so check it out. Lots of cool stuff in this magazine. Yay, so if you uh, want to see a, a, a fellow maker on a magazine, check it out. Lots of really good articles on that. Yeah. Uh, make sure to subscribe to those. You can also get, I believe, the free PDF, if I'm not mistaken, on their site. Yeah, okay. Run by the so. Raspberry Pi Foundation. Foundation. Yeah, so that was cool. It's supporting that, um, those guys. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Hopefully we'll see some more fellow makers from the internet on, uh, on the magazines. Yeah. It's always fun, celebrating. Okay, still doing Shop Talk. Yep, if you guys want to do any Q&A, you can go ahead and queue those up in uh, any of the chat rooms. Yep, I want to give a shout out to Tommy from OSC. <laughs> OK Synth? No, o OK Synth, no. <laughs> well, OK Synth is the project, but Tommy, the, the name of, of, of his handle, OSCE Tone? OSCE Tone? Maybe it's Oskitone. Let me know, Tommy, what, how, you, how you pronounce it. But yeah, so I'm checking out this project. Uh, this is the OK Synth 2. Um, it is a DIY uh, modular synth, I want to call it. Maybe not modular, but synth, yeah. And you can check out um, his website where he shares his projects. And you can also, he also sells them on Tindy as kits. So if you are into uh, kits and DIY synthesizers, uh, check out uh, his website and check him out on Tindy. I actually am going to put this together, the OK Synth 2, um, for a Tom Lips Tuesday video. So I'm printing the parts out actually behind me and I got myself the parts. So we're going to put that together and do a little time lapse video of it. Pretty neat. You can, uh, you get two octaves and you get some, some knobs here for changing, I think, the octave and the volume. You get a speaker, pretty neat. I'm looking forward to playing with it. And here's a little clip of, uh, of Tommy playing with it. Also shout out to Liz who uh, built uh, the OK Synth 1, which is just the one octave. Mm -hmm. um, and you can yes. print it and customize it and all sorts of stuff. I really like this project, it's a lot of fun. I, I love music, uh, musical stuff. Yes, great uh, project video, definitely check that out. Mm -hmm. This will just be a quick time lapse of it being built. Yeah. So if you want it's a, a fully <laughs> detailed one, definitely check out. Liz's it's a big video print, on that. guys. It's very. Big. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's pretty large. So these are the top and the bottom parts so far. Um, so just getting all the parts printed, and um, it's it's you're gonna need a big printer. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't fit on my Ultimaker. I was really bummed that it didn't fit on the Ultimaker. Uh, the keys do, however. So we had to print this on the Type A machines. So uh, that was printed on the heated bled with just. Um, this lovely P teal PLA from Melt Ink. So I'll get all the parts printed and I'll let you guys know uh, how the build goes. Yeah. So that was OK Synth by Osquito. Yeah, cool. we got a I question here right. on uh, what is the best type of glue to use for connecting PLA to PLA? Um, for quick stuff, you know, super glue is pretty nice. It's a hazy, so if you don't care about the milky yes. kind of decoloration of your stuff, you could do that. Or you could use something like E6000. We tend to use E6000 on a lot of things. It takes a little bit to dry, but it is a, a silicone-based adhesive that uh, we, we like using. So just if you're going to use this stuff, just be sure you're in a well-ventilated area. Um, it can get a little, little hazy. I mean, not hazy, but it can make your head feel hazy. <laughs> so that's, that's some good glue. We like using a lot. A good flexible glue. So if you're like, you know, uh, you're trying to attach a rubber to a metal or a plastic to a rubber, mm -hmm. uh, it works pretty well there. Okay. And keep posting up your questions in the chat room. Uh, E6C, does it fog it? No, it does not fog it. Oh, they mean like the bot? Oh, it doesn't no, discolor it, doesn't, it now. No. Uh, and yeah, you can trim away any excess with a scissors or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty flexible. Yeah, it just smells bad. 
John K is saying that DevCon works pretty well as an adhesion. Oh. Okay, I haven't heard of that. That's cool. We got 10 minutes left. So real quick on just congratulating uh, SpaceX on their launch. <clears throat> Last week we yeah, did the show yesterday. a little bit it's earlier. A event yesterday. Yeah, yeah it's crazy uh, rocket launches there. Definitely living in Iron Man age. <laughs> Okay. So uh, last week we had to do the show really early just so we could go get our Model 3 delivery. So Noah has a quick little video on that, his experiences with it, uh, driving yeah, the first. It, I, you know, it's a bit of shop talk, you know, it's a, it's a new piece of tech. It's a tool that we're mm -hmm. using to get to places. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's a pretty good investment on our part. Uh, so I thought I'd do a quick kind of tour of the Model 3 from Tesla, the um, RFID card to kind of get in. Um, really, <laughs> probably the most minimalistic interior design of any car. It's, 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 quite, it's quite delightful. Um, I really like the profile setting so that you can, each driver can have their own profile. So the, the, the steering wheel will adjust and your chair adjusts and your mirrors all adjust depending on how you set it up and you can save it out as a profile. It's pretty neat. I like that. A lot of the, uh, just about everything is done through a, a giant screen, which uh, some people don't like, but I didn't find it too cumbersome. Um, some people are thinking like, oh, I don't like to look off to the side um, just, just to see the cluster gauge, but it works out for me. As you can see, in the, in the, you have a pretty decent field of view uh, in your eye, so you can just, just about see it and you don't have to turn your head to look at it. So pretty nice, very delightful car. Um, of course, I recommend it. <laughs> if anyone's in the market for one, we do have a referral code. So let us know if you want that. Um, yeah, we've, we've had it for, what, six days, seven days now? Mm -hmm. So uh, we put in how many miles into it now? Like 50 or so? Not a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll travel more at the end of the uh, month. Uh, Kirby's asking, do you always need an RFID card to get in? No. They're, um, you can connect it up to your phone and do sort of a keyless, keyless entry. So you can enable that. Everything's remote controlled through your phone. Which is, a, it can be a little annoying because every time we walk outside, you know, we always have our phone on. That's a setting. So it just turns on. Yeah. There's a lot of settings you can adjust. So depending on how you want to interact with the car, or you can customize it however you want. Um, but yeah, there's no fob. It's just that card or your phone. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, now it's looping. All right, so that's about it we have. If you have any questions about it, you let us know. Yep, we'll definitely come up with some more projects for that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Alex is like, oh my God, you own a Tesla. Yeah, so you know, we, we re reserved it, what, three years ago, mm -hmm. two years ago? Um, and it's, it was something that we didn't really know about until it kind of was pre-announced. We actually plopped down the, the down payment before we even seen the thing, before we even saw the announcement, because it's a kind of a decent cause, you know. Um, really like the brand and what they're doing. And uh, it, the time's kind of lined up perfectly for us to kind of get our hands on one. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right, I think that is going to do it for questions as well. Okay, we got some more stuff. What else you got? Yeah, still in the shop talk. We're probably more of community makes. Let's go to community makes. I wanted to shout out, where is it? Over here, if you go to the learning system, we have Liz's second guide on the Adafruit learning system. Her first one was the uh, make code, or, or not make, yeah, and make code, uh, the snow globe with circuit playground. And now she put together a, a, <laughs> sorry, uh, a new pixel light, a ring light for an LED ring light for the GoPros. So check out Liz's latest guide, walks you through the builds. Great build video overview. Talks about a little bit of the design. I wish it, uh, her process of design and coming mm -hmm. up with it. Um, very very cool. So check it out. Yeah, I really like the use of Circuit Python to uh, control the uh, it's RGBW. Both. Yeah, it's both. It's, 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 both it's Arduino and Circuit Python. Mm -hmm. And I really like the design of setting this up. Yeah, good job on that. Really good uh, kind of take on uh, an idea that's. Kind of needed the RGBW mm -hmm. to make it actually look really good. Yeah. So check it out. Make ups on that. Really cool. Okay. 
Yay. And then one last one from uh, Donnan is asking about uh, being able to sand the E6000 uh, yeah. adhesive. You should be able to sand it. Yeah, you can sand it. Said. Yeah. And I think that's going to do it for us for this week. Thank you all for joining. Yeah, if you we'll guys take want a to uh, follow all the behind the scenes, you can check out the Adafruit Instagram. Follow us as well on there on Twitter. And don't forget to later, later tonight. Show and tell at 7.30. If you guys want to show off any of the projects you guys are working on. Yeah, come on by. You'll win, a, you'll win something. Mm -hmm. it's, always, it's always, yeah. And then right after that full hour of Lamar and Phil on Ask an Engineer, take a look at all of the new products, some secret behind the scenes things that is being worked on. And then tomorrow, be sure to tune in for John Park's workshop. Working on really, a lot of really cool stuff there as well. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to the... more coupon codes. To the big... Want to say. The big... Uh, the Is it the pocket, pocket Operator uh, yeah, mod? Yeah, yeah. That thing's mm -hmm. amazing. Lots of really cool uh, audio projects. Yep. Don't forget, all your purchases uh, help all the lovely people that work at Adafruit. Mm -hmm. 100 plus people. Manhattan. Made in New manufacturing in New York. And, and, and afar. So, thank you so much for supporting Team Adafruit. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, coupon code. It lasts until 11.59 p.m. Tonight. <laughs> Use a rotary dial to get 10% off your purchases. Works on everything except certificates and subscriptions. I've got like this lingering thing in my throat and I'm dying to like <laughs> cough it up. Thank right, you guys yeah. so much for joining us. Don't forget to make a, a great, great day. day. Bye everybody. <laughs>